had this team that was too greedy. They needed a lot of experience. They needed that tri lane to really work, and it felt like Don't it was a tri lane that had a fairly low success rate against the heroes that yeah. Complexity had. So they also gave Complexity Undying Quap and Undying uh, and Gyrocopter right, mm -hmm. <laughs> not double Undying. <laughs> that would, that be, would scary. be scary. Yeah. Well, you see Ehug adjusting their bands now. Quap and Dazzle both taken out of the pool right away. Complexity does take out Gyro. This go-around, Ehug does have first pick, so they will be able to snatch up whatever prized hero it is that they want to go for. But, Wisp, maybe? Yeah, I think Complexity, certainly considering the Wisp ban, possibly maybe. the Undying as well. The other question is, does Team Ehug really play the Wisp? Ooh, they ban out the Shadow Fiend, so team pick. good old Io could be an option here. I think complex complexity definitely plays the wisp. I know Z Freak is a pretty solid wisp player himself. So if E Hug doesn't take it, they, I imagine, would uh, scoop it up. Yeah, I'm not sure about wisp for E Hug, Zeus. but it's it's always uh, oh, okay. first pick Zeus. Interesting. Pick. Not something we've seen for a long time. Maybe back in 6.83 where yeah. he was used a lot for his vision. His great laning potential is still there though. He is a lame dominator and can get a lot of farm mid, off lane, or safe, depending where you want to throw him. Usually towards mid nowadays, though. Yeah, I, I would actually say that Zeus is a little bit underrated on this patch. As you mentioned, the last patch, he was all the rage, and he's really not gotten a lot of love here. And he does kind of fit the bill, can fight very early on, huge amount of burst damage, still has all that great vision, so... Like, the biggest nerf to him, or the only Five nerf to him, was the remaining. reduction in vision around his ultimate from... Mm -hmm. I think so. It was nuts. It was like 1,200 down to 600 or something. Reserve yeah, time. yeah. Sort of similar to Storm Spirit with mm -hmm. that ball lightning yeah. around. Huge... Uh, the flying vision. Yeah, huge vision nerf there. The problem with first picking Zeus is if he's... If you're assuming he's mid, there are a lot of heroes that just completely shut him down. Viper's one that comes to mind right away that just completely oh, hurts the Zeus. And Oh, Chen DK? Chen, another hero that can work very well against ganking Zeus in the mid. He's just so susceptible. And Z-Freak, a top-notch jungle player. He certainly has the micro skills to pay the bills. I've really been enjoying watching some uh, sort of pseudo-push strats where you have Chen farming the jungle for the first 10 minutes or so, mm -hmm. and then you suddenly hit this timing. Yeah, that's the There it is. Chen yeah. Dragon, a good call, my friend. Team pick. It's nuts. I've been talking to quite a few people here. It's been a great experience uh, being able to chat with people and sort of... You, you have know, a lot of resources in between yeah. games. Pick their brains. Oh, yeah. Hani's one that really loves this. Chen and DK, the fact that you've Dyer got Chen who can back. control mid for DK, mm -hmm. who is, you know, a strong laner but is susceptible Complexity sometimes to people roaming down. in and just raw nuke power from some magic damage. Yeah. But Chen, he can send the 700 HP Harpy towards mid and start zapping people back if Zeus gets a couple of lightning bolts to the face. That back. thing is ridiculous. Yeah. The, the Harpy is absurd. The cooldown on that lightning is just insane. That can actually win the mid lane early on. It's, it's like, pretty rough. We, we saw it back in 6.82, I think, uh, Poppy. He was level 1 as Chen, his entire jungle was warded, he was dire side Ten as a Chen, level 1, 8 minutes into the game, some, like something absolutely atrocious like that. Mm -hmm. He got a Harpy, he sent it to mid, first blood hadn't been spilt, he got a first blood behind the Radiant tier 2, he killed the Courier with it, and then he started stealing stacks and things like that. All of a sudden he's won the lane and yeah. sort of destroyed the enemy, the morale crushed. Now, Bounty Hunter for Ehug, this is a great pick against the Chen, we've seen this strategy a lot. Uh, Big Daddy is a guy that comes to mind on Cloud9 that is so good at executing this Bounty Hunter versus Chen Strat. FY on VG. Yeah, there's, it's, it's pretty popular these days, but it can be difficult to execute. Ten if the Bounty Hunter makes a misstep, if there's a sentry ward he's not quite ready for, if they set some kind of a trap and he Five dies, all of that hard work of absorbing that experience and harassing the Chen can very quickly go to waste. And then you have this Bounty Hunter who's underfarmed, underleveled, and a huge liability. When it works, it's amazing, but when it backfires, it can cost you. So hopefully their Bounty Hunter player is, is ready to rock and well-versed in the ways of interrupting a Chen's farm. Yeah, he's usually very good at sort of moving in towards the mid lane and putting a lot of pressure on there. DK, not as susceptible to the bounty hunter coming in, mm -hmm. but it kind of reminds me of a game we saw yesterday where uh, two Chinese teams went up against each other. And what you want to do if you have a pretty squishy mid lane hero is give them a sentry so they see the bounty hunter coming. Mm -hmm. So they gave him a sentry. The opponents with the bounty hunter gave their mid laner a sentry, so it's just this battle of sentries <laughs> in mid lane, everyone countering each other's wards. Yeah. So we'll see uh, if... If either of his teams go for that, early sentries place is always good. Yeah, it's interesting to see the Viper ban out here. I, I brought him up as a great counter to the Zeus, but with the Dragon Knight already picked up, it seems pretty likely that he'll be the one headed to the mid lane here. So I don't know that Complexity really would have wanted it anyhow, but Ehug, we talked about Vision, and boy do they have a lot of it. Zeus and Night Stalker, great for Vision, and even Bounty Hunter with the track. So a lot going their way. Now they just need the Beastmaster to round it out for the, the full Vision squad. <laughs>
Do you think that's what they're going for? I, I think they've already got enough it, vision, to be it, honest. But It seems very sort of coincidental that they've gone for these three heroes that rely very heavily around vision. Like, okay, it's going to be good against pushing strats because you do tend to tunnel vision onto these objectives. Mm -hmm. It is pushing strat for a reason. You're going to look for the towers, and if you don't have vision around you, you can get sort of uh, trapped in. And there are some heroes that really shine in those kind of environments. Magnus is one that really comes to mind. Hitting RP, difficult if they see it coming, but if they don't know where the Magnus is, you have limited vision. Getting those big RPs becomes a lot easier all of a sudden. And if they wanted to grab something like a, a Magnus and then another melee farming core, I guess it could be the Night Stalker, but utilize that uh, the Empower to uh, kind of turbo farm, get some ancient stacks going and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think there's a chance they could grab Magnus here. But now Rubik for Complexity is their second support. Pick. Again, you see the team fight synergy in this Complexity draft. Darkseer in the offlane to set it up. Dragonite with his AoE yeah. Breathe Fire and all the splash damage he can put out. Shen with all of his creeps. Complexity and you look at Ehug and again, all these great single target heroes. But where does the team fight come in? Where is the control? How do they stop the push? Yeah, that too. Um... I mean, Marana has Starfall, but not you really have the to best get, creep clear. You have to get in close as well. You're going to get stunned up, vacuumed, lifted. Yeah. This is, this is looking a little bit tough. The Marana pick feels a little out of left Five field to me here. Remaining. She's not very popular on this patch. The few times that I've seen her, it's been with a very obvious uh, kind of a setup, Reserve like a, a Rubik time. Marana or a Shadow Demon Marana. Curious if she'll be in more of a core position or if she is uh, more of a support hero this go around. I think it kind of does play into what you were saying about the Magnus, similar similar vein with the Moonlight Shadow and what I was saying earlier about That's true. That's a good wrapping point. around. But complexity, as soon as they see the bounty hunter pick, they're already planning for sentries and dewarding. So yes. Moonlight Shadow isn't going to be as potent. Yeah, that's another great point, actually. You're just making those sentries that much more cost-effective every time they're picked up. And you see right away, complexity ban out the Shadow Demon uh, to... Get rid of that uh, kind of cheesy duo and e-hug. They banned out the Juggernaut. It was banned out in the last game. It is a, uh, a carry that I believe Ziz does, uh, does like quite a bit. Remaining. So Complexity thinking about Five this final pick remaining. here. They will need a core of sorts. Hmm, who's still available here? Reserve I think this could be a good PA game, honestly. A lot of squishy heroes jump on top of the Zeus. Hmm. They could grab something like a Luna if they really want to commit to the push, get that aura going on. Kind of feels like you want some additional synergy with Vacuum. Mm. But it's a hard call, because... Uh, well, Luna like, could uh, fit the bill for that yeah, with the bouncy so. glaives. Yeah, it's one of those situations where I'm thinking, I, I want a ranged hero, but I don't want a, you know, a hero that's too squishy that's just going to get Shuriken and Void and mm -hmm. zapped by Lightning Bolt to death. I mean, something like a Medusa could be strong, but okay, they go with Phantom Lancer, so... Dire team pick. Yeah, long range harass can... Yeah, it's pretty, pretty self-sustaining. You know, the point you made about invisibility now yeah. is really true. Um, yeah, early gem, I think, for complexity, a, a good possibility. Um... The biggest problem with this e draft for me is they just have no control. Their only stun is Marana Arrow, and that has to be one of the least reliable stuns in the game, I think. They have three mini stuns. Yep. <laughs> Void, Shuriken, and Lightning Bolt. Yeah. And back in the old days, Ricky's Cloud had a mini stun as well, but not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> ah, the old days. Uh, I hate to say it, but again, I feel like this is just an outdraft. I think they have a, a stronger draft and one that's a little bit easier to execute. I mean, get the, the basic farm in the lanes, and then they can just death ball. An E-Hug, Bounty Hunter against Chen, difficult to execute. Zeus Ten versus EK, that'll be all right in the mid, but even Riki and Marana, those are tricky heroes to execute with relative to what uh, Complexity has. Again, these guys are very greedy. They need, they, they need a lot of experience. This time it's not so much gold-wise. You know, there are no big key items you're saying, this yeah. hero needs that, and this hero needs the other, but experience-wise, they, they need a hell of a lot. I, I just think that... If Ehog don't get first blood or bounty runes, if they don't get, let's say, 10 kills in the first 6 or 7 minutes, Complexity, like you said, could just look to push into tier 1s, tier 2s, and keep the ball rolling. It's definitely a very heavy snowball lineup here from Ehog, an unconventional one. But with track, there's always the possibility of some form of comeback. Mm -hmm. That's that's a great point, actually. You can't underestimate track. One of the reasons why Bounty Hunter is quite good on this patch, and he, he's an odd hero where when he looks good, he looks completely <laughs> broken because of how much gold you get. And when it backfires, he just becomes a liability. A very hot or cold hero, but can certainly be quite potent. What's Justin doing? Z Free already has a smoke. They are ready to get aggressive if need be. Thirty seconds to battle. Where is Justin? 
Turtle's up in the trees down here. He did go boots first, so he's ready to chase down this Chen. Clarity Tango already scaled the Shadow Walk. I'm curious why he's hiding in this particular area, though. So it seems an offlane Night Stalker. Yeah, I think it's because he doesn't want to waste his Shadow Dance. So he wants to come up and actually body block the Magic Bush spot. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea, actually. Arrow will connect on Fly. Uh-oh, first blood could come for E-Hug. Complexity are ready to fight, though. Fly still stunned up. Will come out of it. Ja, he gets to the Kines. Are they going to be able to finish him off? No, Fly uses a Clarity. He barely stays alive. Now they're going to turn it around. Ja in big trouble. He's on the run, but he will live. Ziz not going to have enough damage here. Will the Illusion? It's Justin that draws first blood on the backside to finish off the Rubik. Seems that positioning paid off after all here, Durka. Coming in from the trees. He's not going to get the block off on the camp, but... Bloody Nine and Justin both in the Radiant Jungle already. Okay, so a good start for Ehug. Better than last time. Night Stalker, unfortunately, will have to walk back to the well, but he's already bought that TP scroll, and we'll be able to head back to the lane rather quickly. Well, that's first blood for Ehug. That's step one, right? Yeah. How many bounty runes did they get? They got one of them. So, okay. not looking too bad. Yeah, Dark Seer got the other. You see Justin on the prowl, looking for stray couriers here, and he gets eyes on Z-Freak, and we'll just see him follow him around, leech all that experience, and do what little he can to snipe last hits and steal some gold. Bloody Nine will be roaming on the Marana, I guess? I mean, right now, this safe lane... You're completely is, shutting down the Chen. You've got just, two heroes yeah. stopping the Chen doing anything, but then it's two heroes. It seems the opportunity cost is quite high. Letting a PL basically free farm against the Night Stalker is... very... Um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for here? Very dangerous. And look at how they're using the courier here. They know the bounty hunters around. They put a sentry ward down, and they will put this courier in kind of a, a weird path here. Swindle meets it at the tier two tower, being very cautious and not giving this bounty hunter, bounty hunter any yeah. extra room. I like this. If they've got supports, they couldn't afford the sentry there. We've even seen people use a support line at level one to actually pick up the bottle and then take it towards mid lane. Arrow, not going to land up atop though. Telekinesis, they've got infinity trapped oh, here. Boom, the and the surges. And now the iron shell will take a kill. Easy kill here for Complexity. Swindle in mid. Sentry Ward's what? already helping him out. Oh, Swindle, does he go down here? He's got the point in Dragon's Blood, has some bottle charges. Nope, he'll live. Okay. Oh, Complexity striking back nice and early. The roaming Marana. This is really not something you see too often on this patch, and it's very high risk, high reward. We'll hold that thought, though, as Fly. He gets scouted out up top. Justin on his way in. MJW trying to chase him down. He telekinesis him back, but there's no support to be found. I think this is a dead Rubik here. Yep, certainly is. It'll be Zeus that gets credit for that one. Boots against no boots. Mm -hmm. But yeah, back to your point about the Night Stalker down in bot lane. PL against Night Stalker. What are we looking at last hit wise? 7 for 2 and 9 for 2. So both of them pretty much trading blow for blow here. And regen wise, PL has had to buy uh, some more tangos. Arrow is. Oh! No! It barely hits the creep. Boy, was that one close. Ziz will live, and this is exactly why the roaming Marana is high risk, high reward. You hit those arrows, you can shut down the PL, but if you can't connect, this is a level 1 Marana with no farm. She needs to make something happen soon. Uh-oh, oh, up man. top, Justin gets dusted. Moon Meander gonna chase him down here. Level 2 on shell already deployed. Fly nearby. Telekinesis, Phase Vault. Justin hits the deck. The two sentries here that were for the Ricky. Bounty walks up to top lane and pretty much just hands them a kill on a silver platter. Yeah, this is the big problem with all these invisible heroes. There's absolutely no reason why Complexity should think twice about buying lots of detection. They've already got dust and sentries aplenty. Dragonite, Swindlemans in mid lane. He's got Magic Wand as well as his bottle over on the Courier. Arrow, I heard fly again. Yep, off the mark. That'll be uh, the Phantom Lancer surviving once more. The one good thing for Justin on this Bounty Hunter is he's level 2.5, which isn't too bad for 3.5 minutes in on this roaming BH, but mm -hmm. Phase Boots is not far away. S surprisingly, I, I guess because he's 1-1-1, one, one, and one, but he's getting closer and closer to them, which gives him so much more kill potential. Arrow, middle lane, swindle hit. MJ doesn't have mana for too much. Three seconds until the Soul Ring's back up, but with the stick charges, DK is perfectly fine. Yep, and they see Justin nearby. He bumps into Ooh. the tower. Oh, oh, swindle gets sent back by the gen. No, he's fine. And just trying to be a bully here, and there you go. Right back to the base. Chen coming in handy. Do as much damage as you can before being sent back. Yep. Moonmander getting a lot of farm out of this uh, off lane here, though. Not much the Riki can do to slow him down. Actually, the last hit leader, 26 and 1 right now. This will be one farm darks here. Meanwhile, MJW telekinetic by Fly is going to run to the low ground, but Sea Freak's already there, ready and waiting. Swindle with a breathe fire. Sets up the kill, and it is Fly that'll get credit for that one. Justin rotating around, pokes Z Freak. But not much he can do here. Yeah, no sentries of dust left. 
A lot of them expanded up on top lane, and Rubik needs boots. He buys boots, gets some dust and a TP scroll. Just gonna kill pretty much as Infinity top lane, Moon Miana again with the surge. Gonna chase him down, but running out of vision. Looking for looking for the sort of counter juke play there, running around in circles a bit. Yeah, this is a, a tough lane for the Riki, no doubt. Only 12 last hits as your safe lane farmer. Certainly hoping for a bit more than that. Zeus getting some decent farm in the mid lane. Justin will wrap around. Big damage coming in on the Swindle. An arrow flies. It'll be off the mark. Does have a Dragon Tail. Eats the stick charges. Will not survive, though. Lightning Bolt more than enough to finish him down. And they get a ward to boot. And that's good stuff for Ehug. And 3-3 three to three looking a lot better than last game. So far, at least. Yeah, but they still have this Murana not really finding too much. You can't flash on top. top lane. Yeah, Duff, you're right. Telekinesis. The walls dropped, but not on target. As Moonmeander misses. He is dusted though, still a few seconds left. Moonmeander might be able to find this kill. The healing south. Smart play from the Riki. The level 3 Ion Shell doesn't do enough burst damage to finish it off. And now Infinity may turn it around. It's going to be a close call, but the Riki Maru comes out ahead. And he gets a solo kill up top. Huge value on him. Now Fly, he's going to go down as well. It's a double kill for the Riki Maru. And all of a sudden, Ehug looking a lot better. That was big. Infinity now up to 1200 gold. Mm hmm. That was a really nice play. Uh, the, you need a, a certain threshold for the chunk of damage to knock off the salve, and Ion Shell does not have it. Very nice heads up play there. Now, Justin towards the mid lane. Looks like the radio supports have slowed down a bit here in the placing of sentry balls to keep tabs on this little guy. That was also big for Marana. She's now at least level 2, gets her boots and another clarity, so Bloody Nine getting something in the way of experience. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Zeus goes for a rune, but Ziz is there. Z Freak as well. Justin gets the kill on Chen first, actually, but Ziz will bring down the Zeus, a one for one trade, but there's more coming. E Hogger on the way, and so is the Rubik. Chen setting things up with that uh, tornado. It just tickles though. Ziz getting chased down by Infinity, looking for a deny from the neutrals perhaps, but he will not find it. Bounty Hunter gets another one on the scoreboard. A double kill for Justin. All of a sudden, he's level 5 with quite a bit of gold in the bank. That level 6 is right around the corner. This is going great for Ehug. They've pretty much won all of their lanes. They're ahead only by 3 kills, but this is what they need. They've got Urn now in the Night Stalker. Night time, he's running in looking for kills. Jar though. He's running low on HP. Ooh, a lot of low health heroes here in the mid. Swindles pop the ultimate Dyer's form. So he just hit his level attack. 6, but it looks like they won't find any Dyer's kills out of it. Moonmander, though, cutting the creep wave up top, putting a lot of pressure on this tier 1 tower. So even though Ehog is getting a lot from this roaming, it doesn't come for free. Moon getting all this space means this Dark Seer could have a mech coming out pretty soon. He already has the Arcane Boot Soul Ring. I think this would be a great game for him to just ru uh, rush the mechanism. Yeah, then Chen can go for Vlad's. He's got the Ring of Bassy, so that's kind of natural progression for him there. Mm -hmm. DK, what kind of items does he have? Courier bringing treads, I guess? No, as a bracer. Is this so a Silver Edge game? Uh, Not really. I don't think so. He could still go for a Shadow Blade, though. Infinity, Sentry Ward, and Dust utilized here. He'll be Telekinese, and they'll have more than enough damage to bring him down. Easy kill there for Z Freak. His complexity start the mini death ball here with four heroes rotating to the top. Yeah, and now they start bringing it back. Stop pushing into these lanes, and Eog, they need a, a, a bigger kill lead here. Again, what is their strategy to stop the death ball and the push into towers? What's, the, what's their mechanism for clearing through creep waves? Yeah, and that's the thing. Even though Ehog is doing well in this early stage, Complexity hasn't really hit their power curve yet. They haven't started grouping up. DK just hit level 6. Chen doesn't even have the uh, hand of God yet. So they still have a, a long ways to go before they're, uh, they're in the clear. Oh, I mean, haste on Zeus. Looking oh. for stacks over in the raiding jungle is that? Bloody nine, he gets caught here. Chen Creep set it up with an ensnare, and the follow-up makes it another easy one for the Radiant. This one will go the way of the Phantom Lancer. And now time to set up base camp in the dire jungle. <laughs> Tier 1 at mid, easy target for them. They've got Telekinesis ready if someone wants a TP. Oh yeah. PL just cuts the wave. Chen coming in, double troll and the Wild Wing Ripper. Yeah, nice spread of creeps here. You get that armor aura from the toughness, but they already have a Bassy, so it doesn't really matter so much. The double and snare is dirty, though. Glyph comes out, NJW throws out some harass of the lightning. Ziz with the doppelganger forward. Won't find what he's looking for. Ultimate from Zeus gives them the vision they need, helps soften up complexity, but they're all still relatively healthy. Now the darkness used by Nightstalker. Ehug e sentry. Ehug want to initiate this, but they're split into two groups. 
And Riki Maru not with him. This is a five on four. Jaw goes in a little bit too far, and they've got plenty of damage. Breathe Fire will finish him off. If they want to make a fight like that happen, they absolutely need the Riki with them. The smoke cloud alone is such a useful asset in a, a team fight such as that. Trouble is, he's got double Wraith Band, no treads. He's got a TP scroll, but the distance he'd have to travel there is just too great. Arrow. Next on Z-Free, but there's just no follow-up. I mean, this is the death ball starting earlier than planned, and they're going to take a tier two. It looks pretty easily. Moon Meander chasing down Bloody Nine. And Split Push isn't an option. You can't really force Complexity to react to what you're doing. You have to meet them head on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just don't have the Split Pushing lineup. And now Riki, after getting a little farm up top, will just start rotating towards the mid lane. But as you mentioned, it's a long way to walk and not the most efficient use of his time. Justin still not level 6. This is an absolutely crucial level 6 for Team E-Hug. Sizz will lose his regen rune, but not the end of the world. I feel like Justin just needs to get near a creep wave and just start leeching some XP. Need that track. So, E-Hug, you know, is pretty balanced the term in terms of net worth across the board for, uh, for them up against Complexity. They did have themselves about a thousand lead six or seven minutes into the game, but that wow. suddenly changes as yeah. Complexity take, what, three towers in a row? They haven't taken Roshan yet, which is probably on the cards in mm -hmm. the next couple of minutes. Well, and look at this. A ten-minute gem picked up by Complexity. An early pick, but I'd say not a moment too soon with all this invisibility. Given that they're already starting to five-man, Z-Freak will just go straight for the gem, and Moon Meander will indeed go for the mech, so... Good itemization in general here from Complexity. DK? Is that going to be a Glimmer Cape? Oh, okay. So this is a, a great build on the DK. You can go the Glimmer Cape, it's disassemblable, and that's yeah. one of the things that makes this item just so damn good. You can turn it into a Shadow Blade, then have your casual cloak, and if you want, upgrade to the Silver Edge, or just have a nice easy build up to a Shadow Blade. Again, something we were talking about at the table, that this is something we were kind of expecting when Glimmer Cape came out, and we realized it, you could disassemble it. Mm -hmm. Slot and DK both really do like having magic resistance and then going to Shadow Blade. So it's a great natural uh, sort of build up, and Absolutely. then go into the Silver Edge. And it gives him sort of a natural Shadow Blade in terms of initiating in fights before he would have the money for the Shadow Blade. So. But we haven't really seen it on DK. Slark, we've seen it once or twice, I think. Just, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you're behind and you need the Shadow Blade, that cloak is so valuable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Complexity, get that tier 1 tower in the bottom lane, and they'll just keep this push on going. E-Hug not really showing signs of making defense. They're all split around the map. They want to split push top, but Riki and Night Stalker not really known for their split pushing abilities. Not really, no. Every Dyer's single tower pretty much down here, outside of the base. Yeehug, one tier two remaining. But with the tier two bot gone, Roshan? Go straight in there, just... I think they could. You don't even need to play sentries anymore with a gem on Z-Freak. Yeah. Uh, who's he giving it to? DK? Darkseer? Uh, Darkseer. Okay. One, one of the tankier guys. And the, the mech has now come out on the Darkseer, so he's really tanky at this stage of the game, for sure. Huge amount of armor, nearly a thousand HP, and he has a casual cloak on top of that, so... He won't be going down anytime soon. Honestly, I think Complexity don't even need to be sneaky about it. I think they could just walk into the Roche Pit and go for it. They would be happy to take a team fight against E-Hug in, in close quarters. Looks like they are baiting out a little bit, expecting E-Hug to go in there and scout it. And Justin, yeah, this is what they've been waiting for. Walks up oh, onto the high ground into death and destruction. Even if they didn't have a gem, that still would have been a death. There's just a casual sentry ward hanging out on the ground. Fly placed that even though he knew the dogs had a gem. Just like, yep, get the double true sight. Yep. Certainly doesn't it hurt. The bad guy in the middle of four skeletons, two dog trolls, the illusions from PL. Oh man. Well, Swindle making a stop off here. We'll pick up Drum of Endurance after the cloak. So it does upgrade that bracer and just going for these great combative items that give him a little bit of a bump at this stage in the game. Now he's naturally rather tanky, nearly 1400 HP and not a bad item to have at the stage of the game like this. Another smoke year used by Complexity. And I like what Complexity did early on. Uh, I'm not sure if you noticed, but they had two smokes out of the gate, but they didn't use them right away. So they had to go through those, and now they have a lot more smokes available as that timer was put on cooldown yeah. pretty much straight away. Not a strat you see often, but seems to be working very well in this game. It's a great little nuance to pick up on. Some teams still do it, and I think CRS teams are sort of seems like Empire are the best at doing this because they know they will need those smokes later on just to try and make the movements across the map with sneak as they possibly can. Bloody Nine at mid. What's stolen? The arrow thrown out, but he's already leapt up onto the cliff as a track. Does go down onto fly. Find Justin. Moon Meander still hanging onto the gem. They'll chase him down. Doesn't have the ion shell quite yet, but there it is. He gets tracked, and they'll see if they can continue to chase. Level one vacuum. Arrow cooling down here in just a second. Don't know where he's gone. Oh, no, they don't. Okay, just a little bit too speedy. YOLO arrow. Not going to find much. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Swindle. He may get sandwiched here. 
Takes the silence from the Night Stalker. Now the silence from the Riki Maru, but just look how tanky he is. TP? All heal from Chen, and he will TP out though. I don't know that he needs to. TP rotations coming to the tier one tower. He probably could have stayed to fight. Really bounty. Justin finds the courier. Now looking for the Chen, but he gets trapped up. What was on that courier? My uh, my courier hockey is not working. F2, I think. What is it? Yeah, it does. F2 is you have to rebind it to something. I don't think anyone's done it. Radiance bottom tower. See, do I dare do attack. it real quickly here? I'll, I'll do it Radiant online. Radiance structures are fortified. And, uh, where is it's just number two? Oh, it's just top number two. tower. There is you under go. Attack. It was a recipe for bloodstone. Ah, no, okay. No, that's a dire courier. It was a circlet and an iron brand. <laughs> See, it's gonna go down. So it was nothing meaningful whatsoever. Okay, bloody nine. Though taste of his own medicine as he eats an arrow from Fly Swindle makes it an easy one with the breathe fire. All the while, Ziz just pressuring the last outer tower remaining for Team Ehug. Things quickly devolving for this dire side. It's now six to one in total tower count. 15-minute Bloodstone for the Zeus. Surprising for MJW, his farm is still quite good. The only one on his team that's farming nicely. He's done a great job of spending gold. Infinity hit by the arrow, though. They've got the true sight, and where did he go? This <laughs> she just ceased to exist under the burning power of this Dragon Knight. This sacred arrow steal from Fly has proved so valuable. It's already set up two kills for them, and at the very least, it's, it's a great scouting tool as well. You just chuck it ahead, and you get a little bit of intel on where the enemies may be. Ooh, arrow mid, disconnect on Swindle, but the follow-up, non-existent. 1200, 1300 HP, he's got 20 armor, Dragon Knight pretty much untouchable right now. Yeah. It's 10 to 8, Ehug would love to be in the lead, but they're already getting their base pushed. Mm -hmm. 16 minutes in, and high ground siege has begun. And even though Bloodstone on Zeus at 15 minutes is pretty amazing in terms of timing, I don't know that it's the item that'll really get them back in this game. It does give him a little more mana to play around with in terms of defending high ground, but... Sea Freak, he's picked up his power treads now. I think it's the only item that would do it. like it's Yeah, like what else is there? I mean Like if you go full staff or blink, you're giving yourself mobility, but mobility to you know do what, go where, what are you gonna try to escape, you try to save your teammates, because once e hug commit to something, I don't feel that they should try and run away. The the fact that there's so much chasing power here from complexity, just the fact they've got surge, I think that just gives them enough. Yeah. That e hug Time to defend high ground. Yeah, fair point. Justin, tucked into the trees here, does not want to get caught out. Moonmander trying to chase him down. Ziz is getting pretty close to his defusal blade. Has both the blades of alacrity and about 450 gold sitting in the bank. He's going to move into Ancients now, and this PL is just farming up a storm. Really nothing slowing him down at this point. Arrow not going to land on DK. Bloody Nine still fishing for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, they found him. Justin. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, poor little guy. Moonmiana just 1v1s him. <laughs> That's pretty easy when he's stuck in the trees. Not too much the uh, bounty hunter could do. Well, bounty has like 650 HP or something stupid at level 7. He's got no strength stats. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, so, uh, null talisman even. Yep. Now Dark Seal just moving into a pipe. Getting very close to that Hooded Defiance. and Great itemization again from Complexity. Items that really give you a, an edge at this stage of the game. And even the mech alone gives them a big bonus. Getting all these aura items, that little bit of extra aura from the drums, does make a difference when you're grouped up like this. Even though they've taken down all the towers, the metrics don't say they're that far ahead. It's like, you know, a 5,000 lead or something like that in terms of net worth, but they are peaking right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And this tier 3 tower falling very quickly. Swindle in the front lines, tanking it up, but he's got a regen rune in the bottle, so he'll be happy to tank that tower, pop the rune, and then they can just rinse and repeat and go right back in, I think. They've already forced out the glyph, so now Ehug won't have that reset tool. Arrow? Oh, does connect on Ziz, but all of complexity is right there. Track coming out, they've got great vision. But Moonlight Shadow will not yield any kind of initiation for the dire side. Infinity has no TP scroll. Oh. He's over on the top lane, he's gonna have to go and sell Calling Blade right now, so losing tier 3. This... What is he doing? I mean, are, are they just gonna let the, the mid lane of Barracks fall here? Ehug need to contest this. I mean, this is do or die. Sure, they're far behind. If they lose a fight here, it could be the end of the game, but watching your Barracks fall at 18 minutes... It's TPing now. It's very scary. Okay, so they let the tier 3 go down. Hmm. This is tough for Ehug. Stays up on top lane. He bought a TP. He bought two, in fact, Ooh. making sure he's always got a TP scroll. Big spender here. And now he will make it back as he sees the team complexity starting to retreat. Still a great push from complexity. I think if they want to just breach the high ground, though, they should just go for Roche. It's an easy kill for him. Justin has the same idea. 
They'll start softening him up, but this is not a duel he's going to win. Looks like the rest of the Dire team will rotate down Radiant. Take a look at their vision here. Oh, the Night Stalker ulti gives them that little bit of intel they need, but Bounty Hunter dies to Roche. I was watching that and I was thinking, hang on a second, what's he doing? He got bashed twice as he was dying, but I don't know why he was there. I, I, I caught it when he was on, you know, 150 yeah. HP. Well, I toggled to the Radiant Vision right when he died. I just assumed he would back out, but I mean, why was he tanking Roche by himself before his team got there? It's not like he has any kind of regen abilities. He doesn't really do that much damage. That was an extraordinarily awkward play that I'm really not sure how to analyze. <laughs> no. I, I don't think there is. And I think the best part is that Complexity absolutely does not care. They know they're in Roche. They're like, well, take the Aegis. We don't really mind. We'd rather have your barracks mid. And now there's this awkward uh, engagement here in the mid lane where you got track. Aren't track stolen? Position. Oh, this is a huge steal for Fly. I think more for the vision than the, like they don't care about the gold too much. It's mm -hmm. the vision. Absolutely, yeah. CG in the high ground. This we'll take a look at Radiant Vision, and now they see MJW. They get a little bit of intel where all those heroes are, and all of a sudden things get a lot easier. Also, that Diffusal Blade is up on Ziz, so say goodbye to your man. Top lane, Chen creeps. Doing a lot of work here. Tier 3 tower getting low, but the fight could break out soon. Moonlight Shadow deployed, but remember, they have a gem. It's somewhere. Justin getting low. Moon Meander is the gem carrier right now. They bring down the Bounty Hunter. He's in the grave, but does have a buyback available. No one contesting the Chen army up top. The tower getting very low. This is scary times for Ehog. There's your buyback, though, from the Bounty Hunter. Oh, aggressive TP as well, with nice stuff coming in from the side. Ziz taking some burst damage here. Infinity. Barrett's actually not taking that much damage. The all heal from Chen comes out, but there's the ultimate from the Zeus. A lot of low health heroes on the Radiant side, but they just can't finish anyone off. Chen finally falls, but Jaw very low. Tracks coming out of plenty. They will bring down the Ruki to stop the Aegis. Of course, he is coming right back to life. They're ready and waiting for it. They're going to bring him down fast. He'll try to blink strike away, but simply put, he can't. And with no buyback available on Nice Stalker or Ricky, this is definitely mid lane of Rax, if not more. Top tier 3 on 369 HP. Mm -hmm. MGW losing mana, losing HP. Swindle Mellons wants to go in here for the stun back score. At the last moment, doesn't want to dive too far behind tier threes, tier fours. Uh huh. And Moomiander, he does have the pipe of insight on the way on the courier. So that will make things extraordinarily difficult for Ehug here in this next skirmish. So much of their damage output right now is coming from that Zeus and all of his magical damage. And being able to nullify some of that will make this difficult. No arrow from Mirana, though. <laughs> track, 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 track him back. <laughs> Track for track. And also the uh, Vladimir's offering coming out on Shen. Yeah, so I'm glad to pipe, they've got everything. I just love this itemization. It's Aura Gaming right here. You've got uh, your Aquila, drums, everything you want. La last thing is Greaves for the yeah, Darkseid. Yeah, exactly. Give him a little more mana efficiency. I'm not even sure they have time to finish it. <laughs> Complexity really doing this right, executing very well. He hooked up, better showing the game one. They have got. Some kills up on the board, and mm -hmm. more than just one. And Vinny's Ricky has been decent. I'm still impressed at how well this Zeus has been farming. He's still number two on net worth, and not that far behind the DK. He, he is closing in on Aghanim Scepter, but attack. we'll need another thousand gold, and we'll definitely not have it for this next skirmish. They see Infinity, though. Moon Meander searches his way over, has that gem of true sight. Vacuum back. Good back. But still not far enough to stop him from the blink strike to his friend. And they, they saw his path sort of towards the creep camp, expecting him to blink over the cliff, so the vacuum stopping that for a split second as now Moon is caught. Arrow to land, the gem to drop as MJW zapping people down. DK, Swindleman is losing a hell of a lot of HP, pops the BKB, but he's already on, what, 400 HP? Mm -hmm. But he's still alive for now, doing a lot of damage, Jaw and Deep, but they don't have the gem, the Moonlight Shadow keeping them alive, Bloody Nines picked it up, and now it's Complexity on the back foot, Swindle tracked up and brought down Z Freak. he'll try to TP home, and it won't happen, it's a blood back here is complexity and a lot of trouble a four for nil oh my gosh this game just got broken wide open all those track kills definitely making a dent a 5,000 net worth game for ehug oh my good gracious Durka they may have found a way to get back into this game how did they do this Zeus just zapping people down. The DK lost a lot of HP before popping a BKB. You know, there's lots of small factors there I think that if, just add up. If any other hero got picked off first, that would have been a completely different fight. But since dogs, Moon yeah. was the one carrying the gem, he dropped the gem, the Marana picked it up, then they had no answer to the Moonlight Shadow. So that gave Ehug the little reset they needed. They found the keen initiation on complexity, and at that point, they were just too weak. The BKB had worn off on Dragonite. They were already in retreat mode, and then it was just an easy cleanup.
So then you've got to ask, why was the Darkseer there with limited mana, limited HP, and just allowing himself to get caught? It just feels like complexity. Okay, we're invincible. We've yeah. taken down mid ranks. It's 20 minutes in. We've got exactly. all, all of these items. There's no way they can stop us. That's what I was going to say. It just feels like a cocky play. You're very far ahead. You see the Riki and it kind of got baited out a little bit. So, we're king of the net worth chart. I'm still waiting for it to update completely. And yeah, that's a big bump. Now only a 6k net worth lead for complexity. And experience lead actually goes the way of Ehug here by just a couple thousand. So. Still not really bad for complexity in terms of the general scope of the game, but now they definitely need to be more cautious. And another fight like that, an E-Hug will find themselves in a pretty good position. Like, like Moon right now is getting wrapped around on the chair, I think. Spots out the Marana. They're spamming pings down as Moon. Time to run. Time to hide. Infinity. Arrow lands. They're going to find him with a smoke down. Moon's dead again. And another track kill going the way of the Dire. MJW gets that one. And Zeus picks up the Bloodstone charge from the long range. Oh, my. 12 Bloodstone charges. Aghanim's Scepter completed. The Bounty Hunter gets a Dagon. Big items coming out for this dire side. Bloody Nine has a Hand of Midas. Important to note, though, Chen has bought another gem. So Complexity do still have a tool to deal with all these invisible heroes, but they need to not lose this one, as it will be on cooldown for a while. They need to wait for Darks here, though. 20 seconds until he can you know, respawn, then what, TP towards mid lane, run his way up to the yeah. top tier 3? I mean, there's no way they can fight without Darkseer. As the mech and pipe carrier, he is he's really the key facet to these team fights working. Well, the gem's been given over to fly on his Rubik now. Glimmer Cape done for him with another drums. PL, what's his progression like? Diffusal Blade, we saw 2,000 gold in the bank. We'll see what he goes for next. Something like Yasha into Manta, I think, is the, the way to go. It just gives you so much more flexibility on the hero. The doppelganger illusions, uh, a little bit lackluster, but you can use those manta illusions to spawn more illusions, and that's what really lets you get that big snowball bout of damage. Interesting positioning here from Complexity. They've got three heroes kind of deep in enemy territory with the oh, bounty. Moon again? Or, or, yeah, pardon me, with the Darkseer farming down bottom, and he's about to get wrapped around on here. Moonlight Shadow's been deployed. He's in his own base, though. All right, yeah. Makes it back in time. I wonder what complexity you're waiting for here. If they are, are waiting for some kind of a, a key item or objective before they try to breach high ground again. Seems they are still in a very aggressive position, but Moon Meander, the only one not with them. Maybe they were just waiting for these Guardian Greaves that the Dark Seer has now completed. Ooh, Crystalis also on the Dragon Knight now. Swindle transitioning into more of a, a damage based build. Ehug are making their way up to top. Are they just going to try and take down a Dox here again? Because if they can find that target and kill him, he is the conduit, basically, for complexity. He is the synergy hero. Mm -hmm. He brings everyone together. He allows, you know, big telekinesis to breathe fire, the PL to find them. But then the pipe and the Guardian Greaves are massive in these team fights. Hmm. Not a very common item to see on Darks here. A little surprising that it's only in 17% of Darks here games. Wow. Rarity indeed, but I think this is a great game for it, no doubt. Oops, smoke from Complexity has five heroes. Who are they going to find? They'll bump right into Jaw. He reveals the smoke. Fly. Gets hit by an arrow. Will be okay for now. Pipe deployed. Drums as well. They really want to fight here. Go, trying to steal the track once again, but gets the shuriken toss instead. They have to back up here. They're going to farm the dire jungle, push out lanes. I don't feel they can actually go high. Uh, I don't think you want to try high ground with your pipe on cooldown. There's Glyph and 258 HP on the tier 3, but yeah, pipe on cooldown is a big thing. Mm -hmm. That's what, especially against the Zeus, but that's what keeps your creep wave alive from all the magic damage spam. All right, static field against DK and the Ducks. Oh, yeah. bloody nine. Doing a little dewarding here. Will just barely live. Now the trade-off here usually is, okay, we're pushing us four up into the dire base, but PL's farming, PL's split pushing. PL has never actually been away from the rest of his team. He's always there with, uh, with his other team members. Leeching experience and leeching a lot of this gold is the DK. Yeah. Riki Maru coming online a little bit, picked up Drums of Endurance to get a little more meat on his bones, now has a Yasha, so the agility gain continues. Now Complexity moves into the tower, they waited for the pipe, they'll pop it straight away, Glyph comes out. Moonlight Shadow deployed as well for Ehug. Not in the best position to defend this, they will try the wraparound play with the Moonlight Shadow. 
Fly is the one carrying the gem, so he is ready for it. Sees it coming from a mile away. The pipe keeps him alive a little bit longer. The smoke screen, though, doing a good bit of work, but it's not enough to keep Infinity alive. He gets dropped like he's hot in the grave for 50 seconds. No buyback on him. The tier three tower has already fallen. Ehog in a lot of trouble. NJW takes the dragon tail. That secures the kill there. Instant buyback on him. Bloody Nine getting low will fall to the wrath of the Dragon Knight. Complexity in great shape here as the siege continues. Everyone topped off. They finally get up on the high ground, there's nothing to stop them here. MDW again stunned up, and in the midst of the PL illusion oh ripped apart. The back back on two, Justin, no mana left, and his HP is gone with a final lamps and breathe fire. Tier 4's GG is called, E-Hug tap out. Oh my, well, a slightly closer game like you mentioned. Uh, E-Hug definitely played well in that early stage, but complexity just too strong. Like the XP grab is... is Pretty convincing for that little comeback. Now, now the the line disappears at the last second. Yeah, but of course. it was a pretty convincing push in from Complexity. Ehug with that one fight, the one fight that they desperately needed, did bring them back into the game. Yeah. But they still didn't have anything really to stop the push coming in. Yeah, it was well executed by Ehug, but it, it really felt like the success of that fight was based around Moon Meander just getting a little bit too cocky yeah. again. If he wasn't the gem carrier there, I think that fight would have been completely different. But well played by both sides. Ehug.